Hello and welcome to the Monday, October 14th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I've talked recently a couple times about how Microsoft in future versions of Windows will start to remove some old insecure protocols. And well, the trend here continues. The latest target here is the point-to-point -point and the layer two tunneling uh, protocols. There have been a stable sort of in the Microsoft Windows networking world for a long time. Uh, I think I remember even uh, sort of some of the early uh, version of Windows that supported IP supporting at least uh, PPTP. The replacement here will be SSTP, which is uh, TLS-based, and Ike v2, which of course has also been a long-going standard for VPNs in general, not just in the Windows world. The goal here is to move to more secure protocols and move away from some of the older insecure protocols. They will initially still work. They will be marked as uh, deprecated, uh, but of course in the future, they may then be completely removed. So if you're using the Windows Remote Access Server, that's the VPN server for Windows, then uh, please pay attention here because you may need to change your configurations in the near future. And CISA is warning about a badly configured F5 Big IP Local Traffic Managers or LTM. The problem here is actually somewhat common with these kind of load balancers in that they somehow have to maintain state so users are being pinned to the correct backend system that often uses cookies, of course, in order to maintain that state. And these cookies should be encrypted. However, that's apparently not the default for F5. Instead, the cookies may be in the clear. If they are in the clear, then an attacker can manipulate those cookies in order to redirect themselves to particular backend systems, essentially using them to then scan your environment that's behind the big IP system. So double check that your cookies are encrypted. That apparently is already being exploited according to CISA. And we have a nice blog post on GitHub by Daniel who released some details about the vulnerability he found in Zendesk. Now, this is really a mix of issues how Apple in the example used here in the proof concept exploit does its email address verification, which always comes from the same email address, not sort of from a randomized email address. And that actually then opens up the possibility of an older flaw in Zendesk to sort of revive it and then gain access to other people's tickets. Interesting vulnerability. So I do recommend you read this even if you're not using Zendesk because this is sort of the typical interaction that you often run into with OAuth, with uh, allowing other sites uh, to basically authenticate users and then not properly kind of validating what is coming back from those sites or what credentials a user really has to provide. Another lesson here, we had a number of uh, reports of in the recent year about ransomware and such uh, taking advantage of uh, weak authentication and the leak of uh, support information. Help desks are being targeted and uh, haven't really sort of come up with a good um, defense here in a sense. You still need users to provide sufficient details uh, to report bugs and the like. Maybe there would be some guidance and some value in reducing the time that a particular ticket and such is available in the help desk. And ESET Security has a blog post uh, detailing some new techniques uh, being used by a group they're calling Telecopy. That's a copy with a K and a Y-E at the end. This group apparently is now targeting various travel booking platforms. And the tricky part here is that basically, first of all, the uh, victim is receiving the email that there was a payment issue with their travel travel uh, booking. When they are clicking on the link, they're actually then being provided their actual reservation details. Apparently, this group has compromised a number of 
hotels and other uh, travel related establishments and then uses that information in order to make their scams uh, more plausible. The user is then being tricked into providing payment card credentials, which of course are immediately then being stolen. EZ observed a spike in these particular scams in the summer. That's, of course, when a lot of travel happens. Traditionally, this group has more targeted online marketplaces. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. Remember, tomorrow on Tuesday the 15th at 10 a.m. Eastern, we'll have a workshop uh, with so some interesting exercise about API microservice security. So if you're interested, sign up for it. A link should be at the top of the ISC homepage. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.